will say we will talk about one thing and invariably talk about something completely unrelated. Yeah. And fantasy literature. I'm Ronan V, and with me as always is Leif. Leif, how are you? I'm fine. Everything good? I'm good. I'm just really happy that I nailed the intro first time. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Take 27. Thanks, man. Thanks. Ah, sorry. This week, we're talking about crosswords. Sure. And the works of David Gemmell. Crosswords. Do you do them, Leif? No, I'm horrible at them. <laughs> they they are fun though. Like uh, I I I do like anything that makes my mind feel like it's exercising in mm-hmm. a relaxing way. If yep. that makes sense. Um, but I manage to always squeeze in the wrong word in the right amount of letters, and I won't find out until the I'm almost done with the thing. It's really infuriating. How's that possible though? Do you not get letters? words that bisect hey, it hey hey if you manage to maybe miss an l over here or something like right. y- y- but it still spells kind of the same <laughs> okay <laughs> so what i'm saying i'm i can't read or write <laughs> so yeah crosswords are hard though like to be fair um the good thing about crosswords is we're both getting on in years apparently um it can extend your mental capacity for three and a half years that sounds i guess Really finite. Like, it staves uh, off dementia for three and a half years. Apparently. Exactly three and a half years. Averaged? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but there, there's been studies. And like broccoli, it, it's very good for your mental health. Okay, so if I eat broccoli, I get what? One year? I have no idea. Mate. Two years? I have no idea. Is broccoli better than crosswords? I have no idea. Why, Why are you saying <laughs> these things? Because <laughs> broccoli is well known for saving off dementia. Okay, so if I do a run, yeah, eat broccoli... Do crosswords uh, when it's the immortal point. Am you I Im- you will keep your mental faculties for the rest of your life. I don't believe that for a second. I don't I'm believe already that <laughs> barely here. So crosswords. Yes. You're aware of a crossword. Yes. Right. I'm going to get into random facts about crosswords. Okay. First up, mm-hmm. do you know what the different types of crosswords are? I do know a couple of different types. Okay. So there's the kid ones. There's the... Um, Ones that has like hints on the top, right? No. So there's like in Swedish uh, ones, you, they always have the tiny letters and images. Okay, let's start with Swedish ones because okay. uh, we're both Swedish. Yeah. Do you know what a Swedish crossword is called? A crossword? No, it is not. <laughs> What's it called? It's called a corsword. Arrow. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so corsword. Yeah. Is basically a crossword, but. Directly translated. It's our word. Course? Course word. Yeah, but that's that's a cross. Cross it, word. I looked this up. Yeah, well, you Google Translate doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't mean arrow word. No, it's cross. It literally means cross word. Yeah. Did you know that they were first called word crosses? And then there was a hmm. typo and they were typed as cross words. Okay. And that's where the name came from. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm assuming everybody's thinking we're like 70. Yeah, right. Or maybe 85. When did you start doing crosswords? Um, at a young, young age. I, I come from a household of um, uh, crossword doers. Um, or if you want the technical term, uh, cruce verbalists, if you will. Oh my God. That's, that's the word for people Were you who raised make... in an like, elderly home? <laughs> no, my mom is... Uh, amazing at crosswords. Uh, she's one of those people that will see a cryptic crossword and it'll take her 20 minutes. Doesn't oh, matter yeah. what it is, but she just... Because there's tricks. Yeah, definitely. But the, there's tricks to everything, right? Like Rubik's Cube go in 18 seconds for a guy and it there's takes me... tricks to everything. What do you mean? Uh, uh, is there? There's always a way to cheat. System. Isn't that how they get you in Facebook ads? By saying there's tricks to everything. Like, um, I'm a little bit overweight. So for whatever reason on Facebook, I've been getting targeted ads about weight loss, <laughs> and apparently I can u- I can lose thirty kilos in yeah. two weeks. Awesome! Yeah, right. Just by these little tricks and by paying money. Uh, but also, what did you Google for that to happen? <laughs> no idea, man. Literally the other day, what was it? Or was that today? I can't remember. I I was on my phone yeah. and I googled something stupid like. Uh, God, I can't remember. 
I, I think it was flights because you know I was, I was worried if we can still go places. Uh, no. So it was like flights to a specific country mm. on my phone. Okay. And I had my laptop open as well. Yeah. So I turned to my laptop and I went on Facebook on it, yeah. and there was a targeted ad for that, and that was like yeah, instant, instant. That's coincidence or targeted ad. Well, it's it's obviously a targeted ad. Clearly, Our, the surveillance date has. But advanced. it was so quick. It was so quick. Yeah. My, I can't, my Welcome laptop to didn't the future, even refresh, right? Ads are faster than your thoughts. Anyway, yeah. so different types of crossword. Okay. Typically, this is how they come. So first up is a blocked grid uh, crossword. That's mm. your standard, bog standard crossword. It's what you te- typically get in the US. Okay. Um, we're, we'll get into it later, but typically that's what you get. Mm. It's um, crosswords that, a little bit of quiz, so quiz word, plus a little bit of cryptic, mostly synonyms and things. Okay. You know, not too difficult, yeah. but a little bit tricky. Also, what? I'm assuming we're going to add uh, pictures of all the different kinds in a link under definitely I'll fix that good well, if you're fixing it yeah <laughs> absolutely will because that, otherwise it's it, it, mm, uh, for me at least when you say explain it like that mm. I don't connect at all if you picture a crossword yeah I see boxes yeah so blocked grids yeah. is, is basically little boxes um with a little black square where there is no a letter. Yeah, and that's always in a crossword. No, it isn't. Okay, it feels like it is. <laughs> it, it isn't. Not the black squares anyway. Okay. Because that would... Uh, barred grids is another type of crossword. Okay. Which are typically more compact, a little smaller, mm-hmm. but they actually fit more words in. Because instead of block, uh, black blocks, yeah. they have just shaded lines. Okay. So say you have a grid of... Uh, 10 by 10 yeah well typically they're 15 by 15 yeah, yeah. but if you had 10 by 10 um you would have on a blocked grid mm. you would have say like- five four and a five letter word mm. a four letter word and one square would be black to show that those two words were separate okay yeah if you get me yeah so like one would be one across yeah. the next one would be two across okay mm. whereas in a barred grid it would be five and five okay and it'd just be a shaded yeah. Line. More efficient, I guess. More efficient, but you, you don't tend to get these a lot. Yeah. I, I maybe I think it's just because it just doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Um then you have the cryptic crossword, which is what I'm most familiar with. What's that? Um the clues are harder. Okay. So it's like uh clues within clues, if you will. But how that's just guesswork then. It's not because there are tricks to it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. It becomes a second language. So yeah. uh, I've done a couple in my life, not, right. not many, but yeah. And you clearly quite fast realize that. Uh, <laughs> We're drinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, you quite real fast realize that um, uh, the same uh, words uh, or synonyms are used a lot right yeah so it, it becomes a language in itself right like it is it, if they say this yeah. they always mean this not yeah. that right absolutely it's uh so there's a term for that it's called crossword ease so it's words which are found in puzzles or crosswords mm-hmm. but you typically would not use in everyday's life okay so I, i'll give you an example so i do the times crossword okay like I, I, it's the only reason why i buy the New times, times? No, no, no. Uh, UK Times. Is there a Times in the UK? Yeah, I think at one stage it was the biggest selling newspaper in the world. Never heard of it. You joking? <laughs> it's only the New York Times. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Times hmm. is one of the most famous newspapers. I don't know. Anyway. That's the thing. So you guys need to spread your culture more. Right. You've not been doing that it's correctly. Not you guys, I'm Irish. Oh, yeah. uh, that's a UK paper. <laughs> anyway. Sure. Uh, the UK Times mm-hmm. is famous for its crosswords. And it's the tip. It's typically the one I do. Okay. Um, big fan of it. Um, it's just challenging enough. Mm-hmm. I've. Ne- I don't think I've ever completed one in my life. Because huh. yeah. you have to have a. You have to know everything in it. Like there's a lot of factual knowledge, and some things I just don't know. Yeah. And well, I don't. I as a rule, I don't look things up. Okay. I'll go back to a crossword, mm. but I won't look things up. Okay. You know, if mm. I don't, if I don't complete it, I don't complete it. Okay. So what you do when you have, it's on the tibetan. Mm. 
but so for instance, um, uh, you can describe it enough that you can Google it, but you can't find the word. Then yeah. you kind of know what it is, but you just need the word. You do, but what you you go away. Yeah, okay. You you let your subconscious okay work that out. Like I'll leave a crossword. I used to. Now I buy the books, the yeah. compendiums of like. Uh, 100 crosswords times crosswords i buy those it's easier Mm. but what i used to do was um like in my house or whatever i would just have a stack Mm. of the newspapers and every now and again i'd go back and i'd pick one out is it a daily paper it's a daily paper but i typically do the sunday okay Mm. it's a weird thing actually so the daily crossword generally Mm. in uh newspapers new york times famous for this they'll have different difficulties on different days yeah, okay. Yeah, but I, I, that sounds rings yeah. a bell. Yeah. So you would know that if you want a really tricky one, you get it on a Thursday. Yeah. If you want the easier one, Monday, because yeah. Monday's a bit of a drag anyway. And that, that's, that's there's, there's so many little little mm. layers to it. That's, I, I like crosswords. Mm. Anyway, back to, so, Bard Grids, mm-hmm. cryptic. Mm. Um, cryptics are the ones, you don't get them so much in the US and the rest of the world. Mm. It's kind of a UK English thing. Um, okay. And maybe it's a bit snootier, but yeah. they're typically harder. Okay. So you have to actually know how these crosswords are done specifically. Because there's anagrams within words, and there's words that will indicate... So it's the hipstery crossword. Uh, I don't know, hipster, because yeah, there's a more it's always culture. been a thing. Yeah. yeah, it's people who do real serious crosswords. Cryptic, okay. that's their wheelhouse. Are there crosswords competitions? Oh, God, yeah. Who's the best crossword puzzler in the world? Um, well, actually, uh, let me just go to my notes here. Is he? Does he have Olympic medals? Um, so, uh, God, have I not written his name down? Ah, Mark Bremen mm-hmm. right now is considered the best. Why? Um, because he compiled the hardest crossword of all time. He made it. Yeah. And nobody solved it or something. Well, the thing is, people who generally are really good at solving them yeah. are very good at making them. Of course. But... Yeah. Isn't that like... He makes the most asinine questions and guesses and then nobody else understands it. Why? Well, here's the thing. So, in 2018, he released what he said was the hard... Like, this is a man who's done... I think it was something stupid. Like, he does 32,000 clues... Not crossword, clues, a year. Okay. And like he does it for like four different uh, publications. Like massive respect in Mm. this world, cryptic uh, crosswords. Is Um, he rich because of this? No, I I think, (laughs) I think it was, I think, what was it for the New York Times crossword, Mm. which I think is the most famous in the world, just Mm. bloody the US. Um, For that one, I think. There you go, New York Times. You know, it, I'm not saying New York Times isn't a thing. I wasn't disputing that. I was yeah, most famous, most good, yes, yes. Crossword-wise, but <laughs> it's it, the one that's been most popular culture. But yeah. uh, So I think it was in 2015, 2016. I could hmm. be entirely wrong about all the dates, but they used to only get paid $40 for each crossword. Okay. But now it's 150 Ooh. So, well, if it's... So there's no money. No, if you do one every day, it's a nice side of income. Right. Yeah, they all do other things. Anyway, so Mark Bremen, in 2018, he released this crossword, Mm. which he said, of all my years, this is the hardest. Um, If you get get one wrong, like you said you do, you know, sometimes you put in the wrong word because it fits and it seems right. Yeah, it's in the same ballpark, but it's not right. Yeah. He said, if you do that with this crossword, Mm. um, it's going to take you two years. To do this crossword because yeah. it will mess everything else and up. And you won't find the thing that yeah. was wrong. Yeah. So it, he said all these things, the hardest ever, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And he said the first 10 people get a copy of his new book. That's why mm. it was this, blah, blah, blah. Two and a half hours before somebody contacted him and went, yeah, I've done it. Yeah. There Two and go. a half hours. So how but, hard is it? Crosswords are easy then. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, okay, okay. Um this is the same as... Uh, From that, yeah, okay. 54 across. Let's see if you can get this. Okay. Renaissance figure mm-hmm. reaches end game with US subject. What? Renaissance, Renaissance figure Renaissance. reaches end game with US subject. And that was 54 across. And it is seven letters. Eight letters. Eight letters. Renaissance. I don't know. Yeah, it's polymath. 
I, I, <laughs> even though I know the answer, yeah. I couldn't work it out. No, I, like even I'm like, what? Why did he mean polymath? Like, yeah, yeah like Renaissance. Yeah, okay, sure. Well, it's poly something. Yeah, and then math because yeah. they say math instead of maths. Yeah, okay, yeah. I think, but I. Oh, with U.S. subject. So U.S. Yeah, subject they is do math. Have it as a course. Yeah. Whereas in England they would say maths. Yeah. So math makes sense. This is what crosswords are annoying. Wait, Renaissance figure reaches endgame. What's poly? The poly. I don't know. We can work this out. <laughs> so Renaissance figure so, yeah. reaches endgame. Endgame, so, like the end. Come on, we poly something. I have no idea. And that was sound dumb. No, yeah no. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah we picked the wrong subject yeah <laughs> like math i get with u.s yeah, no, subject and the subject is polymath because that's an actual course that they study in the u.s yeah. universities but no they don't yeah they do no polymath's a type of person i don't know i've seen it on I, so my reference to polymath is basically uh in college tv shows or something that talk about polymath i don't know no, I have no idea. Yeah, a polymath is a person of wide knowledge or learning. Yeah, it's what? not a subject. Okay, now I'm even dumber. Yeah. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Hey, I watch college shows. I know things. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Yeah. So th- that was that. It was the hardest, but it, two and a half hours. But even then, it was only like 10 people got it quick. Mm-hmm. And then everybody else filtered in over months. No, so it, it was, but... It's one of those. So, uh, for me, the um, reference, or not reference, but the same thing goes for um, every game developer ever who goes, oh, we made this dungeon raid, whatever, so hard that nobody's yeah. going to be able to beat it. And it takes like three hours and yeah. it's done. And then somebody's done it on a guitar hero bloody thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the developer spent like a year making it. And then it's like another year until the next one comes yeah. out. So they're in panic because nobody has anything too new to play now. Yeah. So, yeah. it, it, <laughs> that was upsetting for him but he was okay anyway back to crosswords mm-hmm. so you can also get a thematic crossword so that's a crossword just basically on a theme like okay. a nautical crossword yeah, yeah, yeah. and then a code word which I had totally forgotten about code words but I used to do these a lot when I was younger a mm-hmm. code word is there's no clues Okay. it's just every letter is replaced with a number yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my daughter who's six does that yeah right <laughs> you can get hard ones man. Huh? all right can you though? dig about it right. are you ready for some trivia on crosswords i'm afraid that the one listener we have is going to run away already but sure <laughs> hit me okay uh i'm, I'm going to go through to some mm-hmm. and then i'm going to tell you my favorite fact okay which Do it. It, it probably shouldn't okay scrabble yeah. The inventor of Scrabble based it on crosswords. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, 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 it's not that interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Originally called World Cross. Word squares were were found in the ruins of Pompeii. Sure. Makes yeah. sense too. Yeah. In Japan, mm-hmm. corner squares of a crossword have to be white. And they're yeah. known as nonograms. I kind of like that. So, the and they had another rule too in Japan that was different. I, it's something to do with the symmetrical. Yeah, has to be slightly. And it off. sounds so Japanese to yeah. do those things. Like, yeah. oh yeah, we have to have this. It must have looked pretty. Too. Let's be weird for the sake of being weird. Exactly. Um, there's also a thing called a Schrodinger's crossword. Oh, that sounds annoying. Yeah, right. It's also called a quantum crossword. It's where a crossword can have two solutions. Okay. Which end solutions or for everything? Just like every, you can do it two ways. Yeah. Which I don't know if it's the same thing, but I used to do a crossword, which was one was a crossword, mm-hmm. and then the other was a quiz word. You obviously couldn't intermingle them. Okay. But you could do the whole thing two different ways. Okay. It's like two puzzles in one. Mm-hmm. Um. A little bit of the, oh. Right, so that's just some trivia. Mm-hmm. My favorite tri- trivia thing is, do you know what the word crossword is in Klingon? Oh my god. What, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Klingon? Yeah, okay, shoot. <laughs> it's crossword. Of course, because it's so weird. That, <laughs> it's, do you ever think a Klingon would do a crossword? That's ridiculous. 
Well, it's ridiculous, but it, it, it implies that they don't have crosswords. Okay, so... Isn't that what that implies? Uh, well, a new in, invent- in yeah. Klingon, you have words for bloody everything. But for crossword, it's yeah. just crossword. Which implies that in the entirety of their culture, they have never developed a crossword. They do not exist. I'm just pointing that out. It's just a fiction... <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, uh, well, consider oh. we're about to talk about fantasy books. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah, let's maybe not knock the fiction <laughs> element of. <you> know. <laughs> All right. So I'm pretty sure Klingon doesn't have a word for internet either, but sure. I bet you it does. <laughs> of course it does. Why though? <laughs> I, I, it's, it's a human. Oh, God. <laughs> Do they have a word for YouTube? Not YouTube, but like you and Tube? Probably. Yeah, sure. But... Uh, oh, God. Why? <laughs> Gone down the shroud. My, my mind hurts now. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. It's internet. Uh, there you go. See, what's annoying about that, man, is I thought the crossword thing was cool. Because, <laughs> you know... Was it, though? <laughs> obviously not. You ruined it for me. They have no word for it to know. Uh, there you go. Well, let's go into the history of crosswords. Okay, shoot. Right. So, I, I do like things from Pompeii. That was probably the one that I liked. So, yeah. But a lot of things... Um, Roman... So... Right. No, so... Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Roman civilization, uh, old civilizations, anything. Mm. Or like even the Cameron. It's like awesome to read a story about people talking the way that we do... Yeah. A thousand years ago. Um what do you mean, talking the way we do? Yeah, so if like you, in English? No, no, no. Like the That'd way they tell a story. I did this, yeah. I went there, I did mm. that. Uh, and it has a moral and an ending. And yeah. everything seems the same, uh, even though that it's a thousand years old. Yeah. And that's, I find that amazing. And it's so easy to forget when you uh, uh, have a weird human sense about time. Right? Mm. So yeah, that was my little thing. Good. There you go. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> tell you what they didn't have, though. TVs. Mm-hmm. Didn't have a TV back in the day. They have slaves to enact things better. That's true. Unless you're a slave. Yeah, nah. Well, yeah. Why? Why would you want to be a slave? Mm. Is this your... Like, do you want... Do you, Are you a submissive? Is this what no, you're trying to say? <laughs> it's crazy, though, that even back in the days of slaves, mm-hmm. there were hierarchies to being a slave. Definitely. So, like, you could be a slave, yeah, but you could be very badly off. You'd be alright. Yeah, like if you're in a learned slave mm. or something. Like you're you're the guy who reads or teach the kids in the household mm. or whatever. Yeah, you're probably better off than the. And a lot of people were happy with slavery. Yeah, even like, some slaves. W- yes, well, it is controversial, but this is the key thing to that. Humans are adaptable. To a ridiculous degree. Mm. So, as long as you get food on the table and you get used to things pretty fast, mm-hmm. yeah, it might not be your dream life, of course not, but you go along with it. Yeah. And if you do that long enough, all of a sudden you don't hate your life, right? So, that, there's an article about um, um, Indians with uh, arranged marriages being happier than uh, Westerners. Yeah, okay, yeah. And, and it's the same kind of idea where um, they take the pressure off and they just hang with the person and eventually mm. they grow to like the person. Yeah. And, and it's... Um, Is that because we're controlled by hormones? Mostly. <laughs> I don't know. Or, that, yeah, that we pick the wrong people. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I like this awesome chick that's... Yeah mean and (laughs) steal all my money she has a nice rack she must have a great personality awesome exactly he has a nice package he must have a nice personality we're obviously compatible done boom let's have 10 kids and then divorce yeah (laughs) oh dear yeah anyway so i gotta stop clapping Mm -hmm. um crosswords yep do you know when the first one was published well, apparently, under a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> As we know crosswords, the first known published crossword 
was in, was by journalist Arthur Wynne from Liverpool in December 21 in 1913. No, 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 no. In the New York world. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. It was the it was the first one that was officially published. What happened in between and the gap between volcano crossword and that crossword? There were a lot of word games like uh in, in UK has a lot of a strong tradition mm-hmm. of like word games that involve blocks and clues and things. But first printed crossword that you can definitively go that's a crossword. Okay. Was in 1913 by Arthur Wynne. Okay. Okay. Um, would you like to try a couple of those original crossword clues? Sure. Okay. Hit me. What this puzzle is. Four letters. Quiz? No. Cro- w- words? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm horrible at these things. Okay. What this puzzle is. Mm-hmm. Hard. Oh, I hate crosswords. This is the, this is the reason I hate crosswords. This is a shit crossword. <laughs> I went through it and I went, "Wow, crosswords like a lot of things yeah. have come a long way." Yeah, hopefully. Because this so. crossword is terrible. Like when it's done like that, I get annoyed by the answer. Yeah. So I, it's like, oh, no, I, I would just throw away the paper. Yeah. Uh, number two, the close of day. Suit. The close. Ah, uh, not the dusk. Case. Evening. Oh, okay. uh, you, you would get that if you saw it. And this one, very much of the time, mm-hmm. what we should all be. Better. Uh, moral. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Moral is the same thing as better these days, right? Yeah. Like in those days, they would have said moral. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. I justified a right answer. Done. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't have fit. Uh, would have been Doesn't wrong. matter. I would have still written it. Do you know what was interesting about this first crossword? Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't a square. Okay. It was a diamond. Yeah, sure. Well, that is a square turn on his head or something. Uh, and then squished a bit. Yeah. Right? Why not? <laughs> I, 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 I'm not bothered by that. Like, why does it have to be a square? Like, it Does it make be... sense? Because Yeah, but if you want to have a 10 letter word on this side, yeah, make it. Do it. What? Yeah. Why not? Like wow. you, do, you do get uh, anthropomorphic bloody crosswords, mm. but that's not right, is it? No, animal no. shaped, just animal shaped yeah, crosswords. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get all that type of thing, but traditionally it's a square, yeah, and that's because there's lots of little tiny squares for the letters, mm-hmm. so it makes sense that it's a square. Doesn't have to be. No, it obviously doesn't have to be. But I'm mm. just saying, traditionally that's what it is. Why are you so think outside the box? Man. Anyway. It took 10 years from the first published one, and and that was in the US, mm. uh, to get back to England, mm-hmm. and that's when it exploded. Yeah, in right. the 1930s, the first Times crossword was on the 1st of February, 1930. Okay. Do you know what the controversy was with crosswords back in the day, when they first came out? That they were annoying? No. Um, that, well, similarly with a lot of things back in the day... Um, the people were wasting their time, moral decay. Oh, you mean like today? Hysteria. Yeah. So but, the same argument that's been prevalent since mm, dawn. Yeah, of man. pretty much. That was it. Do you know why they were banned in Paris? No. Um, because during the Second World War, they thought they were being used as code. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Clearly. Absolutely. Definitely were, though. Yeah. And that's it. That's <laughs> all I got in crosswords. <laughs> all right. So, I, lo- I love crosswords. Yeah, I, yeah. I do so crosswords every I'm, day. I'm more every day. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'll, I'll do something. Yeah. Why are you wasting your time? You have so much potential, buddy. I'm adding three and a half years to my mental health. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, also, I eat a lot of broccoli. And I'm like do a you super run, human. What's running got to do with my brain? The same thing. Helps. Ooh, do you know what was interesting? Sorry, yeah. man, I cut you off, but this was interesting. Um, yeah. they did a study mm-hmm. on people with crosswords, obviously, and um. Some lad called Lewis. Okay. Um, sorry, listeners, this is what you'll find a lot of this. Uh, <laughs> me and my vague references that you'll have to look up yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, see what's So, um, this guy, Lewis, he did a study on crosswords and how it affected the brain. Okay. Um, and with crosswords, especially cryptic, okay. um, he found that people who really got into a cryptic crossword had a lot of trouble 
um, seeing a human face as a whole. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. like I look at your face, mm-hmm. and it's a face. Yeah. But they would just see like the eyes yeah. and the nose and the mouth as separate almost. Yeah. So it's like disassociation. Mm-hmm. Also, um, they would have extreme, and I, I think maybe this is a sign of the times. They would have extreme trouble um, with wine tasting. Because so they would the test them thing. before, yeah. and their wine tasting, you know, they could, whatever, this mm. is fruity, this is mm. dry, this is smoky, whatever. But afterwards, they would have a lot of trouble with that. So what you're saying is crosswords make people insane? Uh, probably a little bit, but specifically crosswords, <laughs> because of the way you've got to think, Okay, um, it affects the brain. So it's not good ways. for you. Uh, it is good for you. That's three and a half years. You get, you get high slash insane. That's yeah. not good for you. <laughs> also, why would you want three and a half more years of being miserable old? Three and a half years to do crosswords, buddy. Ugh, God. So that's crosswords. Um, fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. So, it's so okay. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Um, should I get into crosswords then? Yeah, absolutely. They're fun. Why? What do you mean why? Why is anything I fun? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so enjoy it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. So, all right. You have finite time. Yeah. You're wasting it on this. Well, you're not because it's adding... Yeah, but it have to compete with everything else. Also, it, it adds your... Walking lex- your dog, uh, attending your garden. It adds your lexicon. It improves your grasp of a language. Does it though? When Absolutely. It's annoyingly it does. And obs- spelling. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I am a spelling bad speller. Can, yeah. like, crosswords, Jesus, you got to spell correctly. Yeah. That's why I'm horrible at crosswords. Yeah. And you've, it also helps um, with your writing. Mm. I'm I'm traditionally uh, a terrible writer. Okay. Like my handwriting is appalling, but with a crossword, ah, uh, I found it. So you write horribly, yeah. and you spell horribly. So you can <laughs> you, you basically can see what you wrote, and you go, yeah, done. I finished yeah. this crossword. <laughs> it's like random letters, yeah. scribbled in. Nobody some... nobody can say different. Yeah, exactly. No, that definitely says Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah done. absolutely. That looks like an. G though. Like... <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's crosswords. Um, uh, shoot. Big fan. Do a crossword. It help your mental health. Where should I start though? What do you mean? If I want to get into it, um, I'll, I'll I'll give you a book. The Times does a really good compendium of their jumbo crosswords. Mm-hmm. And if you've never done a crossword, you'll maybe get how many is typically in one? Um, Twenty. There's maybe like fifty clues. Okay. And. I don't know, maybe you get 10. Nah, I won't But that's do it. as a start. Yeah. But then you, you get to learn the rules and things. And then you get more. It, it's. It, I need to get way older to, before I start doing this. Yeah. The only thing I will say about the Times Crosswords is I don't know any Tom Hardy books, Thomas Hardy books. Okay. They're almost fucking referencing Thomas Bloody Hardy books. And I, I think. I'll just go learn some Thomas Hardy books. <laughs> but I never learn Thomas Hardy books. Right. But there are always clues about bloody Thomas Hardy books. What did you write? I don't know, because I've never looked it up. It sounds familiar, so I it should have. I probably read some I'm of them. I'm pretty sure he did Tom Jones. Okay, maybe. But I don't don't look don't look it up. Don't tell me because you know. I I think I think there's a gap in my knowledge which I, I'm just happy to play with. Okay. Imagine all the things you're missing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, okay, I've not read any of those. Did he do Tom Jones? I'm pretty sure that was Hardy. Like, Tess, Tess of the Dune Oh, is he, is is he Tess the Mad- of the... Yeah. You are kidding me. Far from the Maddening Crowd. You Far the from the Maddening Crowd. Tess Mayor of the Durbervilles. Mayor uh, The Woodlanders, Under the Greenwood Tree, Pair of Blue Eyes, Hand of Alberta, Two in a Tower. I've never heard of any of these. Right, I've heard of pretty much all those books. Mm-hmm. I do know Thomas Hardy. I think I just thought he was somebody else. Poems. Ah, that's why. Fuck poems. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> why? Uh, same. Uh, same thing as crosswords. I uh, I get annoyed if you try to say something or have a nice like uh, this is um, uh, payoff when you get it right, right? Yeah. But if the word that they're looking for is annoying then the payoff is annoying too it takes away from that like ah oh, i solved it right so it's more of a ah oh, this word sucks why what did you like 
you know, poetry is a bit different there, buddy. Yeah, but the same thing with poetry. So poetry can be beautiful. Yeah. But the language they use, I'm, I'm rudimental. I have yeah. never, I'm right. not into poetry, so I'm, I don't barely know what I'm talking about. Okay. But for me, poetry um, use too flowery language to explain a thing that I'd rather read in a science book. But that's the way I think. I, I'd rather have it. Okay, you mean this? You say yeah. this? This is the reason why you said it. Done. Not like oh, the moon is waning and the blah blah is waxing. I don't know. Fantasy books and sci-fi books are full of metaphors and similes and based on what? Well, Generally, like uh, fables, uh, myth, legends. Right. Uh, but that's um, a lot of poetry is based on that. Yeah, that's fine. But in fantasy books, you have those things as tropes or it's not integral okay. no and it's a moral or ethical lesson mm. baked in somewhere maybe that makes sense poetry you're trying to it's like opera you're trying to say something beautiful but it takes two hours to do it in four sentences it's difficult mate I, i'm not a big fan of uh opera or poetry but um they're they can be moving and mm. you don't necessarily need a fundamental knowledge of the poem or to know for it to move you. Yeah. So the closest I can they, get they is... use different tools. The closest I can get is a writer who writes beautifully, mm. but does it in something that is closer but to a book. you like music. Yeah. Right. And you've heard songs, I presume, of times, because I know mm. I have, where you've gone, I, I don't quite understand that lyric. Yeah, but that's references. No, but not even, because ah, okay. music can be a form of poetry, and sometimes they're saying things where you're like, I don't, I don't understand what that's you're fine. saying. But it's... Music has many parts and you can enjoy other parts. Well, that's the same with poetry, though. No. Because... Yeah, well, yes, for other people, yeah. but not for me. Okay, for me, okay. it's like, I read the thing, mm. I see that it's nicely yeah. done. And Do you it read it flows. out loud, though? In my mind, yeah. Do you read in your head? Do you hear your voice when you read? Yeah, but that's different to reading out loud. Yeah, no, I don't read it out loud. I read it well, in then... my head. With poetry, I feel like you do need to read no, it out I'm loud. Not a pretentious prick. It's <laughs> pretentious, man. <laughs> like, uh, I, I think poetry of all written works is I'm, I'm assuming, intended to be heard. Yeah, maybe. I'm assuming you have a glass of red wine, a Cuban cigar, and a poetry thing going, and you read not. and you go swirling about your apartment and going. Blah blah blee blee. This is yeah. I'm, I can see that. Yeah, sure. Right. One of those things <laughs> is correct. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, David Gemmel. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Do you good. like him? I heard he's pretty good. Yeah. Big fan. Big oh, fan. Yeah. Of David Gemmel. Is it the best? Moving swiftly on. <laughs> uh, uh, big fan of David Gemmel. You're a fan of David Gemmel. Definitely. I think any anybody who reads fantasy is a fan of David Gemmel. I think a lot of people who read fantasy hasn't read David Gemmel. I don't think that's true, man. I think maybe people who've just gone into it are newborns. Um, well, don't know David Gemmel. Like that, you'd okay. be hard pressed. Like his his catalog is pretty extensive. Yeah, yeah, but you need to actually pick one book up and then start reading. So my. Um, uh, uh, Daniel Green, the book tuber, that's pretty famous at the moment. I'm pretty sure he hasn't read them at all. Daniel Green. Yeah, the guy who does the YouTube videos, oh, yeah, yeah. book reviews and stuff. Is that what we're doing now, promoting? No, other... I just like his stuff, but right. I'm not promoting it. I'm just saying he's, uh, I don't know, 20-something. But he's a kid. Yeah, but that's like... what I'm saying. So do you think the majority of fantasy readers at this time is yeah. our age or his age? Well, our age and older because there's more of us. No, yeah. I think the the explosion of fantasy into mainstream made it so that yeah. a lot of people are way younger than us. And since they're younger than us, yeah. they have gaps in the things that we assume for granted. So for him, instant, uh, the example is he just got into Dresden Files and uh, never read them before and got hooked and you yeah. know, plow through them. Uh, and I'm assuming he hasn't read Gemmel. Yeah, I guess you got to find maybe that Maybe he has, but... Let me ask you this, though. Is Gemmel a pillar of fantasy? Yes, but I don't think, as I said before, that a lot mm. of people read it. A lot of people has read it over the ages. Yeah. But if you name the top ten fantasy books, Gemmel is not in there. 
and the most famous ones. Like for me, for you, maybe. Definitely for you, I know that. But uh, I, 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 if you get recommended on Reddit to read fantasy books, Gemmel yeah. is not the first 10 books that you would get recommended. No, I, I understand that, man. I, I think Gemmel, for a lot of people, maybe mm. our age more than most, um, a lot of people go, oh, I read that Gemmel book and that How got me into fantasy. How old are you, though? Pretty old, man. Like, I'm what thinking is old? like 60. What are, you, what are you doing, man? Like, you're older than me. Like, I don't understand what this is. Hey, you're you do crosswords. You're clearly 60. Right. Yeah. I, again, you're older than me. <laughs> I, I think with Gemmel, and I, I found this on Reddit. I'm not a big Reddit fan, mm-hmm. but I got into Reddit when I was looking up David Gemmel. Um, a lot of comments are on David Gemmel are, I wasn't really into fantasy. And then mm. I read this David Gemmel book, and it got me into fantasy. That's good. But then I don't know if that's just a Reddit thread, whereby you wouldn't be on that anyway. Yeah, but Maybe. I would find it hard to believe that anybody, especially somebody who does a fantasy YouTube channel, mm. could possibly have any sort of uh, authority without having read... doesn't have to have authority. He has to do his I, own I, thing. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, let me finish. Would have any sort of authority to speak on the subject oh. if you hadn't read a David Gemmel. Okay, so how many books does he have to read to have the authority? Just just one. Like, But you, you, you'd have to have an understanding of David Gemmel in the same way I, I would say... Jeez, I'm not a fan, mm-hmm. but if you read fantasy and if you want to talk about fantasy, you, you have to have read a Tolkien. Okay, I agree on the Tolkien. I don't agree on the Gemmel. I would put Gemmel with Tolkien. Heroic no. fantasy, uh, It maybe it didn't start with him, but he popularized heroic fantasy. Definitely. Like, literally that subgenre. But you can genre. read, I'm pretty sure you can read fantasy books for like 10 years yeah. and never step on Gemmel. It's weird though. Yeah, but what about Raymond E. Feist? Yeah, but that's the same thing. So I think Feist goes before Gemmel. Wow. Yeah, in popularity and oh, popularity yeah, maybe because but as a new s- trendsetter. Yeah, but the different things. So if you go into a bookstore mm. and you see Gemmel, you see Feist, you see yeah. Wheel of Time, you see all kinds yeah. of things, and you go, oh, I haven't read Wheel of Time yet. I should get on that. Oh, I haven't read. Don't. Yeah, I know, but. It, what? All right, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and so many other books. Yeah. Right? And for every new book, you have to go, oh, I like it. Oh, there's mm. 10 more books. Yeah, and yeah. You go through them. And it takes half a year or whatever. Like, it depends on who yeah. you are. Uh, and every time you do that trip, there might be uh, so many authors you can get to the first 10 years. Mm-hmm. Right? And Gemmel, sadly, I think it should be up there. But... I think the the other authors take that spot way before Camel, but once they get one, they will yeah. go more. Right? It, it, it's it, it's an interesting thing. Um, I I'm obviously biased. Yeah, because that like I think it was the first fantasy book I properly read. I think I'd okay. read Mercedes Lackey or. Uh, okay. Zimmer Bradley before I read Gemmel. Okay. Mm. Um a little bit sci-fi fantasy, but yeah. I'm pretty sure I read some of that before. But it was Legend from Gemmel that made like just my brain just exploded. Okay, that that was the formation of my love affair with fantasy books. It was For Legend? Me, yeah, that was uh, Fritz Lieber Langman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Fritz Lieber. Mm. Like I know I've read Fritz Lieber. Yeah. I know I have. I can't remember bloody anything. Yeah. I, I, we've talked about this. The Little Moose, or what is it? Fafar and Grey Mouse. Yeah. yeah. I, for 100%, I know I've read some of those. Yeah. It hasn't stuck. No. Gemmel, I've literally just gone back and started reading some. Also, those are like 20 years older, at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, Gemmel has to be up there. Well, so- Your mate Green, if he hasn't read a Gemmel... What should you, I write him and doing? complain? You, you should, because <laughs> what are you even doing with your life? <laughs> Come on. He's a cornerstone. If you've read Tolkien, because he's a, a founder of the yeah. fantasy movement, if you've read uh, Brandon Sanderson, because he's probably the best fantasist right now. Yeah, maybe. Like, maybe, but he probably is. Yeah. Like, whatever. George R. R. Martin, because a big explosion and whatever what he's mm. done. you got to have read David Gemmell. Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a cornerstone, man. Like, Consider- he literally... A, a subgenre of fantasy. Yeah, but there's so Thanks many then. books out there, so many authors, Thousands. so many good series. What I'm saying is, somebody who's doing a YouTube channel yeah. about fantasy and yeah. they're talking with authority yeah, on he, fantasy, he had to. Catch you need to have read. No, I, I understand that, but you need, need to have read 
you need to have a good grounding. Yeah, well, we don't have to. He basically he started out doing his own thing. What are you What are you talking about then? Yeah, but somebody else would say, "Oh, you need to have read." Um, I don't know. Uh, some other book and uh, good argument. So yeah, far, I know. Yeah. Great. You know, but yeah. everybody that has a fan base would yeah. go, "No, you need to read this book. You need yeah. to read this book." So he uh, he had a argument where the. The people who... Um, what's the series called? Oh, God. 12-book series. Starts with the Garden of the Moon, I think. Uh, Malasan series? Malasan? Oh, yeah. Stephen Erickson. Yeah, yeah. There's the same thing there. Like, oh, no. If you haven't read those, then you are not a fantasy expert. You know nothing of fantasy. And he had an argument and started fighting with those guys. <laughs> Do you know, I wouldn't necessarily disagree mm-hmm. because the Malazan series from Steven Erickson mm-hmm. it's huge mm-hmm. and again it's one of those cornerstones of fantasy almost the same amount of pages as Gemmel books though wouldn't you no, say no like fucking Malazan's that's like, like thicker books I know but there's only 11 of them how many Gemmel books are there 33 there you go <laughs> but um, the Malazan series I, I would almost say I've read some of it mm-hmm. I'm not a fan Okay, but I've read some because it it's a it's it's one of those that it's like yeah. it, it's Tolkien esque. So why do you have to cater to those? Just read what you want. Uh, absolutely, but yeah. we're talking specifically about if you're doing a YouTube or something talking about fantasy. Yeah, you need a good grounding. It's like anything; you need to know your subject. Definitely. And with fantasy, for me, David Gemmel is a pillar. For me, he is really good. Yeah, awesome. But he's one out of many. Ah, uh, I almost got slapped there. I felt it. It's fine, mate. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, okay. uh, I, tell I you, saw him do... <laughs> you did something with your knuckles? You're trying to say something? <laughs> Big fan. Like, yeah. I know there are uh, shortcomings with uh, David Gemmel. Mm-hmm. I'm well aware his recycled stories, his recycled characters... Is uh, limited storytelling. It becomes like a TV cover. show after a while. It does, yeah. and it, it's super formulaic. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel it came a bit later. Like his earlier stuff, like Legend for mm-hmm. me. Um, I, I, I just briefly, I only ever read Legend the first time because I thought it was a novel novelization of the Tom Cruise movie. What? <laughs> You've heard of Legend. Which one is that? With uh, Tom Cruise, the unicorns, the oh, yeah, okay, the uh, old one from the eighties, Tom Curry, something. Devil, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's Fantastic. a unicorn or something. Yeah, yeah. I just, I literally just said that, but yeah, oh, okay. thanks for <laughs> yeah, listening. Uh, but that's why I read Legend. Yeah. Um, oh, amazing. Ma- imagine the disappointment. Where's the unicorn? There wasn't, man. There, there absolutely wasn't. I was like, this, this is literature. This is amazing. <laughs> I, I, I've read that book twenty times. Also, that is weird, too. It's amazing. It's amazing. And there are shortcomings. But I have to read mm-hmm. other people writing, these are the shortcomings. Okay. Uh, you know, and what they are. Yeah. So I can go, oh, yeah, that, that is true. There are shortcomings. What's the shortcoming? Um, the language isn't really uh, nuanced or advanced. Okay. It's, it's quite terse. Mm-hmm. And terse? E- terse is like quite short. So like uh, okay. yeah. you were saying flowery before about yeah. uh, poetry. Okay. Um, there's not a lot of description. Mm. It's just this is what it is. But that's uh, David Gemmell was a journalist. So that's the style he wrote in, which was quite boom, 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 boom. Okay. Uh, not too much going on. Character comes in, does this. Character leaves, does that. And that's it. it it's quite fast. Yeah, it is uh, yeah. action oriented. Yeah. Also, you can clearly hear... Uh, English is not my native language because I've yeah. never heard the word thirst before. Ah, okay. Thirst. <laughs> thirst. Yeah. Right, it, cool. Sorry. Uh, hey, short. Learn, learning every day. That's it. Uh, Could I use that in a crossword? Thirst? I don't know. Yeah. It, it is it used? Up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. It's, it's one of those words that isn't commonly used, but you'll find a crossword. Damn. Because it has E at the end. Studying. I'm right. a crossword master. Yeah. What's your favorite Gemmo book? Uh, so, I did like the Denai series, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, but yeah, Dross. I like anything Dross. I yeah. think uh, it got a bit silly with the the damned series skill yeah, yeah. when he came back because of his bone. Now he's spoiling. Why are you spoiling, Listen, bro? We're gonna spoil all the David Gamble books because why? 
Well, the lad died in 2006. Also, there's 30 books. Yeah. And <laughs> at this stage, you know. Um, I'll go through the series. So, obviously, mm-hmm. there's the Draenei ones. That's what he's really famous for. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the Stones of Power, or the Sipstra Sea series, which I, I've got a funny wee anecdote about that. I'll tell you later. Okay. Um, there's the Hawk Queen series, the shortest. Yeah. Three books, right? Uh, two. Two. Okay. There's the Regante mm-hmm. series. There's the Troy series, which we'll come back to. Mm-hmm. And then there's the Standalone, which really interesting. Um, there's also two non-fantasy, but for this, we're not going to talk about it. All right. um, so the Standalone, just to get them out of the way. Knights of Dark Renown mm-hmm. and Morningstar, yep. which actually... and I, I'm not sure if I'm misremembering this, but this came later in life, where David Gemmelsell said... Um, all his works were one, like okay. all in the same Connected. world, yeah. multiple universes, whatever. So Knights of Dark Renown and Morningstar mm. are actually in the Drenai universe, okay. but set a long time before Dross. Okay. It's, uh, when, when you get into the Damned and Skogallan, you can go, okay, okay, fine. But that's fine. overkill, though. Like most people just read to enjoy. It's yeah, like yeah. World. Not yeah. everything's connected. And then yeah. there was Dark Moon and Echoes of the Great Song. Um, Echoes of the Great Song I'm a big fan of and it's a great title okay so I'm just going to go through the books Mm -hmm. Um, what's your favourite book we never got into it yeah we did what was it Uh, no we didn't probably anything Druss oh yeah but that's not that's like a lot of books yeah I know so what's your favourite one no 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 so I pick a character and I follow it and it makes it more Uh, but what's your favourite book Uh, uh, so which one is the one with the battle on the in the fort on the there's like a rope ladder and stuff that's the one where he think, I think he dies what? what? so it's legend yeah there you go legend and Dross Delnuk yeah. I'll also say of every book I've ever read in fantasy mm-hmm. legend is the one that deserves a movie and I will go Who? further I will go further okay if David Gamble had been writing started writing say like five years ago mhm uh-huh. 100% one of his characters would be made into a TV show. Okay. Either Waylander or John Shano, I would say. Uh-huh. And there would be a movie coming out. It He'd be a lot bigger. Definitely, but it's always about timing. Everything mm. in life is about timing. Um, uh, <laughs> well, I don't think it will be, though. No, I I, th- I, th- I think it's past. I think yeah. it's past. Un- until we get because to the nobody point where nobody reads him anymore. Uh, they still do a little <laughs> bit, mate. They still do. You know, he still sells. They're still in print. That's you know, you uh-huh. go to a bookstore, you still see David Gemmel. Yeah, you do. All right. So you know. All right, anyway, okay, we'll go through the books quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, anything you want to jump on, we'll jump on. Mm-hmm. Uh, first up, uh, we'll do it by Drenai characters. Blah blah blah. Okay. So there's the Drenai series. First up is Dross. Yep. Can I, can I just say this about Dross? Um, everything about him mm-hmm. screams the fact that he should be hokey and like if, if you read he feels like Conan but smaller Conan if he had principles okay sure yeah he's never been beaten in a single battle mm-hmm. uh, like everything about him like his code and the fact that there's no two sides to him mm-hmm. except for in the first Chronicles of Trust Legend when he almost becomes you know brutal murderer and that's because he has the code, obviously. Do you know the code of Dross? No. Never violate a woman, nor harm a child. Do not lie, cheat, or steal. These things are for lesser men. Would you call David Gimmel a YA writer? He, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I, I would say he. Yeah, David Gemmel is the precursor to Grimdark. No... It's not that grim. If, if he wrote now, mm-hmm. he would write Grimdark. Yes, that it's I just, can agree. Grimdark didn't exist then. Yes. No. And that's why I'm saying he's the precursor. I'm not saying he, you know, is the founder. Like, he was saying he was reading, writing kind of simplified and short and yeah. action-y and, yeah. uh, and easier. Waylander and John Shano, like, they're the precursors to Grimdark. I, I feel. Okay. I feel. Anyway, anyway. So somebody who want to... Uh, who? Okay, you're such a fanboy, so anything you say about these books are. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm objective. Are you though? No, absolutely not. No, there you go. <laughs> so, 
I know good okay, things. Okay, if you read a couple of fantasy books and you yeah. like fantasy or you never read fantasy, mm. would you recommend these as the starter? Um, yeah, because they're very easy to read. Yeah, but you could say the same for Night Angel. No, not really. Because I, I think if you don't like fantasy, okay. you are not going to like Night Angel. Like, Night Angel's quite heavy. But it's still the same pacing. The no, same not really. you flow through the book. Language wise and themes like uh the okay. the child king who gets thrown into the pit of cannibals yeah. and he ends up eating some human flesh. Mm-hmm. You don't get in David Gemmel. Uh, I, I think David Gemmel's a bit easier. It's a little bit more accessible. Okay. So what you're saying is it's Hunger Games, but before Hunger Games. No. Because it's well written. <laughs> Hunger Games is actually a good stolen. read. Uh, although, uh, we'll get into controversies yeah. around David Gamble. Uh, let, let's get through the books. Okay. So, yeah. Trust the Legend. Draenei. Legend. Uh, fantastic. I, there are so many comments on people who had the same experience I did where this is their jumping off point. He is showing me, and how dare you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> on Goodreads, it has three star rating out of five. I flip and hate Goodreads. I, I I tried to get off Goodreads because mm-hmm. FantasticFiction.co.uk mm-hmm. is a. I don't know if you've been on it. It's no. a great site for up and coming new books and following authors. Okay. And they've started doing a rival to Goodreads. That's good. But they're not uh, linked to Amazon, and oh, being so linked to Amazon is half just, of the books that's gone. Yeah, it's yeah. just so easy. Yeah. God damn you, Goodreads. Okay. How does David Gamble no. get a three star? Okay. This is the reason is this. Uh, I when I'm I s- angry right <laughs> now. <though. laughs> when I uh, uh, when Goodreads when I started using Goodreads, yeah, it was like ten years after I read the books. Right. So I just added random books I remembered. Is this your score? Yes. You son of a. But you just said it's your favorite. Yeah, out of but that's not true though because I just what probably, score does it have? Overall, four point two six. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. And that's okay. really pretty high for. Uh, so my rating here doesn't actually. It basically I added it to just I've read this book. I just added like yeah in one night maybe hundred fifty books. I know what you mean, but what I did was I remembered what they were like and I actually rated them accordingly. I didn't just. I screw haven't done the crosswords, so my mental acuity is not there. Three and a half years behind. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> legend. I was to kick off with the first chronicles of Dross the legend. And then the legend of Deathwalker. Those are the three Dross, but mm-hmm. Dross does come back, mm. as you well know. Then there's the Waylander series, and I think today, mm-hmm. if this was written today, this would be a TV show. Waylander, okay. like Waylander's fantastic, and it is the precursor to Grimdark. Okay, maybe. Yeah, like mm-hmm. yeah, the perfect anti-hero. It's blood and guts. It's in the you know. Mm-hmm. So you had Waylander, Waylander two in the realm of the wolf and hero in the shadows. What's up? Now that. So we're living in Corona times, right? Yeah. One of my first instincts, yeah, uh, when Corona hit, was like, okay, I need to buy food, buy toilet paper, like everybody else. Yeah. And I made sure that if uh, the end of the world hits, my Kindle is stacked with books. Right. I was wondering where you're going with that. Okay. Yeah. Good. And the I first think- thing I did was add all the Gamble books. Cool. I thought you were going to go with that. Um, so I do write them, rate them highly, though, right? Yeah. So you, you can't take that away from me. No. The way I thought you were going with that is, because um, we were talking about Waylander, was end of the world is coming. I need to buy myself a double-headed crossbow. Definitely. I, I thought that's really that's, that's that. like rule number one. Anyway, Waylander. Don't you have one? <laughs> <laughs> if you were to rank uh, characters that David Gemmell's created, Dross is number one. Yeah. I, and I was, as I was saying, any any other author... Right, probably not, cause, mm. yeah, whatever. But who Dross is, the Paragon or yeah, whatever. Okay. So for me, Dross is this. He it has doesn't work anywhere else. You know, he has rules and he's yeah. over the top and ridiculous. Yeah, but it works. But it works, and that's yeah. the key to it. And it makes it. He's very likable, even yeah. though he's kind of like a weird Conan. Yeah. Right. But you do want good things for him, and you want yeah. to see what happens, right? I, that's why I think David Gemmel is a great writer. Yeah. Ooh, did you know this about Legend? Mm-hmm. Just to throw it in. Do you know when he wrote Legend and mm-hmm. why he wrote it? No. So um, when he was writing Legend, he was very sick. Okay. So like he's basically writing in the did hospital. Did he have Corona? Bed. I doubt it, mate. It was written in 1984. <laughs> right. um, 
so he was on it like he was really sick he mm. thought he might die um, and he wrote Legend because um, in Legend it's basically the story of Drostelnok and the Drenai defending Drostelnok against the Nadir mm. or the Nadir I don't know how to say that Nadir sounds better I always pronounce things wrong because it doesn't really matter to me uh, I just want to yeah. have a name in yeah. my head doesn't matter what it is Nadir we youth born axe wielders blood letters victors still do you know what's crazy about that? No. I wrote that mm-hmm. from my memory. I only got the last two lines wrong, mm-hmm. but I had that in my memory, which is insane. Maybe because you read it too many times. Yeah, well, what's too many? Anyway, so yeah. um, he wrote that. Um, his body was Drostelnok, mm-hmm. and then the deer were his illness. Okay, sure. At- attacking him. Yeah. And that was like his immunity. That's where it all came from. Okay. Which is. Oh. And. Oh, Legend's fantastic, man. Anyway, so Waylander, mm. who I would say is. What the second most known character in Gamel's yeah. Lex? Uh, I Pantheon actually think like, it would be interesting to see like sales and stuff. But I actually think the he the, didn't sell much. No, but like I think a million the books. Troy series sold more. Yeah, because he had like a bump of yeah, sales sure. there. Sure. Um, and I think that was after the Connie Golden Empire thir- trilogy. Yeah. So the historical anything. Yeah, kind of. He did like the jump on bandwagons. There we yeah. go. He he very much did. Yeah, that, but that, why not? Like, the Troy series came out. I'm I'm pretty sure just after Troy the movie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so sense. it was like yeah. yeah. Um. So after that, we had the the damned. These aren't in chronological order. This just uh, I'm going through them. So mm. excuse me. <coughs> so the damned was uh, Skilgal and the damned, and uh, notable because it brought back Dross. Mm. Which I hated that at the beginning. I did as well. He did it well, mm. but yeah, like it, it's it's it, it's akin to bringing back a dead character from a soap opera. Yeah, yeah, it just it grated a little bit, and I didn't think it needed it, but whatever, yeah. um, it was fine. I have to say, I haven't read all of them. I probably read, I don't know, twenty four or something. Okay. So, what about these? So, the King Beyond the Gate, which. I'm tempted to say is my second favorite. Which one is that? The King Beyond the Gate is about Tanaka Khan. Um, who... Yeah, it's the Jaguars and stuff. No, it's not that? Jaguar soldier. No, it's not that. No, no, no. That's uh, the Damned. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Tanaka Khan is like uh, the descendant of Uruk Khan and Rek. So the two people who met in Legend. Okay. So Rek was the nobody who married the princess of Egil. Uh, sweet Jesus, why can't I put this kind of learning into my real life? <laughs> that would be helpful, definitely. Right? <laughs> but uh, basically, he's the direct descendants of the two lines of Urukan and Rek. Yeah. So the Dreadai guy and the Nadir, Tanaka Khan. And okay. it's about him, okay. basically. I hate fancy names. I don't know, Tanaka Khan, Urukan, Rek, uh, pretty good. Mm. Druss, or Druss. Yeah, easy fancy names, fine. Mm. Tanaka what? Tanaka who? Well, Tanaka can. Not so it, it just comes from the Mongol. Yeah. Uh, then we have Quest for Lost Heroes and Winter Warriors. Both Winter Warriors I, I thought was okay, but Quest for Lost Heroes, nyeh. Nyeh. The, 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 uh, that's my nyeh. Any Any thoughts? Not on individual books. I... I, I First of all, it's been a while. I yeah. haven't reread them as many times as you have. Yeah. And I. Once I got a hold of my first camel book, yeah. I didn't read anything else until I was. I read everything I could find and buy. Yeah. Um, but at a certain point, the bookstores couldn't get them, or yeah. like there were some gaps, and then it's kind of halted for me, right? Okay. So, um, and then once you let it go, there's a whole new fancy world with everything else. Yeah. There's a lot of books out there. Yeah. So next up, uh, we have the Stones of Power or the Sipstracy series. And this comes in three distinct, uh, I don't think I've read those. You really should. You really should. So that's why I got them all on my Kindle. I'm getting them back to him. So first up, we have the Arthurian, Ghost mm-hmm. King, and Last Sword of Power. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, all of these books deal with the Sipstracy. Mm-hmm. Um, and they introduce a couple of interesting characters, which uh, I'll get back to in a little minute. But the Sipstracy are basically stones 
mm-hmm. which a uh, magic stones becoming okay. a meteor, mm-hmm. and if you wi- if you will something hard enough, it'll come. Okay. It's like a loaf of bread or whatever. Mm. But the problem with them is, of course, they start off golden, mm. and they get veins of black. The more you use them, eventually they're just black stones, and yeah. the only way to get them back is, of course, with blood. But then that turns you bad. So they become bloodstones. Okay, sure. And they introduce the Roland and stuff. I like that there's a cost. At least yeah. there's a cost. I, I don't like power. Oh, yeah. Like it's silly in some books where you stumble over a haystack and all of a sudden you are a god. Girl. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, next up we have Jerusalem Man, which I'm going to skip over because I want to come back to it. Mm-hmm. Then we have the Macedon series, which I've started rereading just because it's fabulous. It's about Alexander the Great. Yeah. But more specifically, one of his generals, Parmenion. Mm. Um, great books, I, fantastic books, especially *The Lion of Macedon* with Parmenion. Like it's the just how historical accurate would you say? Um, not. Yeah. Like broad strokes. Yeah. Like all of these things happened. But it's way but, less than most of those authors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well. So I would say Connie <laughs> Golden or his like mm. writes more accurately it's it's still Con fiction in golden isn't fantasy it's no, historical I know. Yeah, I know. fiction like it's but different. he's tapping into that same i don't know man like because con ingolden is like simon scarrow or the like like that's that's a different genre like, yeah, again it, it, i know it it's is. not fantasy there's no fantasy elements yeah. it's historical fiction but okay would the gemmel books have been better if he in the end did the uh, Oh, I changed this, but I like this, and this is what actually happened. Because I I love that about Connie Golden books. Yeah. Because he did that, and then it's like, oh yeah, this is where I've read read this, and this is the source for that. Sure. And it makes it more credible, even though it's just fiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and you get the tiny threads that you might remember of what actually happened. Okay. Um. No, these are fantasy books. It's what yeah, they are. I I, I, maybe Dark Prince, Lion of Macedon. There's mm. less fantastical, fantastical elements, so mm. maybe it would have. But Dark Prince, maybe it would have benefited from that. But yeah. um, anyway, so, Jerusalem Man. Yep. So John Shannon, a fantastic character, a little bit like Waylander, but that's him recycling. He does this a lot. Mm. Basically, a man after the fall of the world. The, the seas have shifted or yeah, whatever so really now we're walking too. on the seabed you really should they're fantastic the problem with Jerusalem man um, it's akin mm-hmm. to a couple of things okay. so it came out two years after um, oh, my blank Clint Eastwood film mm-hmm. uh, Clint Eastwood cowboy movie ah uh, okay um, he's an old one though yeah Wait, what? Uh, it's not the one that where he is old. No, no. Okay. Uh, no, he is old in it. It's mm. uh, also uh, the Preacher series. Okay. The the Gunslinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the Angel of Death as he becomes. Okay. He's based on Clint Eastwood's character mm. in The Departure. Not Departure. Oh, what's it called? I have no idea. Anyway, but it's based on that. Mm. Um, that came out two years before these books. Okay. Uh I'm going to have to look this up because it's killing me. I had it in my head and now it's gone. Uh, I've never been a fan of Cowboys. Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Okay, yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, right? So it's that kind of archetypical gunman, you know, a little bit hard and bitten. This one's very religious. David Gamble, of course, was quite a religious man and believed in redemption. Read Jerusalem, man. It's fantastic. The problem with it is... It's very similar to um, the Dark Tower series. Oh, I hate those. But this is better. I hate cowboys. I will never read these. It's cowboys, but it's fantastical. It doesn't matter. It makes it worse. No, no. You genuinely should try it. Um, oh, what's the opening line? I couldn't get through the Dark Tower series. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of the Dark Tower, mm. but... Um, the John Shanna ones are very, very good. Uh, like, they're set, I don't know, like 300 years after the fall of the world. Okay. So, there's all that. There's a bit of... Uh, dystopian fantasy, dystopian anything. Yeah. I like, generally. Yeah. 
But it, the cowboy, I hate this cowboys. Is a, this is a bit. This is a bit. Uh, Judge Dredd, but in the what's what's the thing when they're outside the cities? Is it the Wasted Earth? Yeah, maybe I don't remember. It's yeah, but it, it's a bit like that. Like, there's a lot going on. Mm. Also, I, I will say this: the plot mm. for the final book, I think it is, um, Bioshock, stole it. So now you ruined the book for me. Do you, do you know which one I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, I have all three games. What, right. What do you mean? <laughs> the last Bioshock movie or uh, game? Yeah. Like the most critically acclaimed one, yeah. whereby, like, uh, the leader works out that it was actually him. Okay. That did it. You know that kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. That's the plot. Why would you? But spoil you, a, Okay, you keep. You, I'm not me. spoiling it because uh-huh. the simple fact <laughs> is you worked that out early on. That's not yeah, what it's yeah. about. Yeah. Like okay. you know that's coming. That's well, especially now because I've just told you. Mm-hmm. But. So, you know what I mean? But, fantastic. So, for me, it's like this. Um, I put all the books on Kindle, and I would love to reread them. I probably will. Yeah. Um, I won't go through all 32. There's too many repetitive things. There's too Mm. many... There's a couple of books in between where you go, it's not as good. It's still entertaining, Yeah. but I could be reading something else. Okay, okay. You know? But I would say the first 15 yeah. is definitely worth it. Read The Jerusalem Man. It's okay. three books and really, really good. I was thinking about the... Uh, so, uh, this is also a problem. I yeah. generally want to go from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's hard to go, ah, this one. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, next up, we had the Hawk Queen series. And these were a little bit of an outlier. Um, so I've read those. I Iron Hand's Daughter, The Hawk Eternal. Mm-hmm. Like self-contained yep. but um you can see his love affair for like scottish clans and stuff kind of filtering in mm. and like it introduced talazan who i think was in lion of macedon as well mm. and it started to introduce the parallel universes and the doorways and things which let him then say all of these are linked yeah which you know rome was stone or whatever um then we had the Regante series, Sword yep. and Storm, Midnight Falcon, Ravenheart, Stormrider. For me, these are the four books that are uh, at both times least David Gemmel and okay. most David Gemmel. Like there are aspects where I'm like, oh, okay, uh, fantastic. But at the same time, I tend to forget about these four okay. for whatever reason. But uh, very good. Uh, then we have the Troy series, which you talked about. Yep. Lord of the Silver Bow, Shield of Thunder, Fall of Kings. Yep. Fall of Kings been interesting because, well, interesting, sad. That's when he died and was actually finished by his wife, Stella Gemmel. Mm-hmm. Originally, they wanted Stan Nichols, who was a big friend, family friend, to finish it. But she said she would finish it. I don't like it. Yeah, That's when I quit. Yeah. I, I, I think I... Um, I had books of his that I hadn't read. Yeah. Uh, but when that came out, I'm like, yeah, let's go to the next series or something else. It, it, have you read Stella Gemmel? Because Stella Gemmel actually went off, and I can't remember the book, uh, City or something. Mm. Uh, there's two books, and I read the first one, I read the second, and they're very, very good. Mm. Um, Fall of Kings for me went off a cliff. Like, it just. It. it I don't but know. you were expecting another thing, though, right? Not, not even. I just, it's you've read uh, Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series. Yep. yep. Oh, well, not all. Uh, right. I gave up in the nineties, I guess. God damn! I, I hate. I, I don't hate them. I do not like those books. It's why are there fifteen of those books, or twelve, or however many there are? Yeah. Why are there? When I read <sighs> up to eleven, I think. Right. Did you read when Brandon Sanderson took over? No. Because I... So, I read up to 11. Yeah. Then I have to wait a couple of years for the next book. Yeah. And then I'm like, no. And then when there's like three books out, I'm like, all right, let's do it again. Read up to 11. And it's like a... (laughs) I think it's 9 to 11 is hard to go through. And then I'm like, no, fuck this. It's those books, man. I know. Like, it's just... And you only care about like two characters and you want to see what they do but then it's like a, they don't show up in two books yeah <laughs> it's like come I, on it, there does not need to be 
the amount of books characters. in that book yeah. that there are. There does not need to be that. Yeah. That series was famously finished by Brandon Sanderson. Yeah. I'm and those books are int- better. Yeah. I'm kind of interested to do that. Yeah. Uh, read the last three or something. Yeah. But um, I don't know. What I will say, um, those books have mm. the worst payoff of any freaking series of books I've ever read. That's fine. You just want to be finished. That's fine, but it isn't fine. <laughs> I hate a book that doesn't have stakes. Yeah. This book has zero stakes. Mm. Um, anyway, so I'm saying that was a job well done. Stella Gamble, I, I like her new books. It just did not end well. For his last book, mm. that was disappointing. But maybe, yeah, maybe it's colored by sadness. <laughs> But that's it. That's all of David Gemmell's books. Okay. Um, How often do you read these? Um, I'll read some David Gemmell books every year. Like Legend, as I said, I've, I, every year? Conservatively. I, I've literally You're just. 60 years old. So you read them how many times? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm literally rereading the uh, Parmenion, uh, Alexander the Great books okay. again. I, I started them yesterday. Again, because okay. I was thinking about it and I was like, God, I love that book. Yeah. But I probably won't do Dark Prince. Okay. Lion and Macedon, I think, stellar book. Um, let me just give you a little. So, with David Gemmell, it, it's very sad. When he died, they set up a David Gemmell um, fantasy book award. Okay. Yeah. Called the Legend Award. Yeah. And they did that. It sadly it ended last year. Why? Last one. I don't know. Uh, a couple of people. One of the people died. I, I, okay. There's no nothing that says why it finished. It's just like it's done. Okay. So money run out. I, I I presume so, or maybe mm. it's too long after his death, yeah. where he's just lost too much popular. I, I I genuinely don't know, but so it, you need to go out there and preach Gamel to the regular fans. You need to go into a sci-fi store and go. Have you heard about? Gamel? He's still selling, man. He's still selling. Yeah, he is, but it's not. That's the thing. He's not as big as you think he is, or something. I I don't think he is. I I, I know he isn't. I mm. I wouldn't even say he's as big as Raymond E. Feist. No, and I would say those two are comparable. Are yeah, comparable. but I actually, yeah, I think Gemmel wrote more good books. Feist is, I don't think that's true, man. Better in the beginning. I don't. I don't think. Oh, interesting. Which is a better book, Magician or Legend? Magician. No, uh, no, not the first three. This the the Ant Queen ones. That's right. So good. The Mistress of the Empire, yeah. Golden Empire. See, I would say, objectively, mm-hmm. Magician is a better book. Mm-hmm. Subjectively, Legend just has a place in my heart. Well, so I clearly rated Legend as three stars. Which is... <laughs> this makes me want to punch you in. This <laughs> I, no. I, I would say Raymond E. Feist and David Gamble, for me, are comparable. Okay. Just in where they are... In fantasy sense, but and I would say Raymond the, is a bit Raymond e. is a bit bigger. Also, the same kind of age bracket, right? Yeah, probably. So I I don't like the YE genre mm. because I think it's basically uh, monetization. The YE genre, yeah, young adult. Ah, uh, so there's a lot of good books, mm. but they could be good books without that branding, right? It took me a long time to realize that David Eddings was young adult. Yeah, but that's bad books. But they do have a place. I, I, I would, I would still maintain the first series, the Belgarian. Yeah, yeah, is decent. Yes, I agree. Yeah, the the the, the second third, the second three books sucks. He's so still much. alive, isn't he? I have no idea. Yeah, nobody does. I would never read anything that he writes again, no. just because of the second three books. What the Belgariad? Oh. Or the Malorian? The Malorian. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they were But at fine. the same time, I do remember that name when you say it. Yeah. 27 years later. So yeah, right. I apparently made an impact. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, David Gemmell, Remedy right. Feist. Comparatively speaking, I'd say they're of a level. Okay. Remedy Feist sells more. Mm-hmm. He's... Because he's better then. I don't think he is. Money. More famous. Money makes it better. Yeah. Plus, he didn't smoke, so he didn't die earlier than he should. Yeah, smoking is bad for you. That's what all the cool kids say. Is there anything you want to add on David Gamble? No. 
No. No. Anyway, read David Gemmell. If you're doing a YouTube and you're talking about fantasy... Maybe he has read them. Maybe he has read them all. Well, then, fine. Well, I'm not specifically talking about him. I would say right. David Gemmell is a pillar of fantasy. He literally defined a genre, and he was the precursor to another genre. He, I don't agree. How not? Heroic fantasy. That was his wheelhouse. Yeah, he was good at it. I'm saying that's him. He started that. Uh, did he know? Are he popularized it? Conan? No, that's uh, it's different. Is it though? It's, it's different. Why? I don't even think because Conan's not a hero. What? what? <laughs> he's an anti-hero. Yeah, but he's uh, he's this heroic figure. <sighs> no, is he? No, he's the, the the guy that can make the earth tremble when he comes. Definitely a hero. I think he's an archetypical anti-hero. I don't think he's a hero. Yeah, he Heroic doesn't want to do anything. But... Started with Gemmel, popularized by Gemmel. What? Yeah. Ugh, too many. Sub-genres. Anyway, that's why you need to read Gemmel. That's why if you want to do anything about fantasy, Gemmel needs to be at your wheelhouse. Okay. Otherwise, you can't speak with authority on fantasy. What's the first? Okay, if you need to speak about authority about yeah. fantasy, what's the five top series you need to have read? Five top series you need to have read. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It's kind of hard. Tolkien. Yeah. God damn it, that annoys me. But yeah, Tolkien. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I would say Drenai series. Really? Yeah, because that, that's that genre and that style of writing, and that gives you all grimdark and stuff. Um. Not the Black Company. Absolutely, that came after. Like, what are you talking about? Well, not the. Literally, that was. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you are. You're, we're homage. talking about now. We're talking about now. You could yeah. go uh, with thirty. You it's, could go uh, if you study English torture, literature. What's it called? The the. Uh, the evil torturer guy. What's his name? I don't know. George R. R. Martin. Yeah. No. Um, the most grimdark of the grimdarks. Joe Abercrombie? Yeah. Yeah. You could go, go Abercrombie. You could, but I like let me finish my list. Maybe I was going to throw him in, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't because I would say that David Gilmore is a precursor to that. When you like when you study English literature, mm-hmm. you study the canon. Gemmell is not canon. No. For fantasy, I would argue he is. I don't agree. How do you not agree? That's the thing. He's so, a pillar of heroic fantasy. He's a precursor to Grimdark. He's yeah, canon. He, he's good, but... The, okay. You wouldn't put him in the canon of If fantasy. I recommend to a person who's never read any fantasy at all... Mm. Okay, start with this. St- then that's go there. That's not what we're talking about, man. Yeah, but the Gamble is a, so down, long down the list. That's not an argument we're having. <laughs> the argument you asked me was... I can't even remember, but like the pillars of fantasy, what you need to be an authority on fantasy. That is a different question to uh, Are you an of authority fantasy. of fantasy? Probably a little bit, yeah. Are but, you? I don't know. I read enough. Probably I shouldn't be doing this podcast. Maybe. <laughs> I, I would say I'm well read um, mm-hmm. enough to be, yeah, an authority. How many books do you need to read to be well read? I have no idea, man. I, I, I don't know, but what I'm like saying 100, is... 500? What I'm saying is if there's a canon of fantasy, David Gemmell should be in there. Yeah. He should have the MVP jacket or whatever that is called. Um, I'm just saying... He's a up, lot of he, other people. He's up there with uh, your Tolkien's. As canon. Like, I, I'm not even sure that Brandon Sanderson would be canon. Canon, I'm saying. I'm not saying best. I'm not saying what you should read. Okay. And like, I'm a massive, massive Brandon yeah. Sanderson I'm fan. I'm not that much of a I'm Sanderson talking the fan. canon of fantasy. Like, uh, Fritz Lieber, mm-hmm. you were saying, is probably canon. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. That because kind of level where, yeah. where it all came from. Yeah. And if you talk heroic fantasy, if you talk getting into Grimdark, mm-hmm. David Gemmel. That's canon. That's the roots. Okay. That's what Maybe. I'm talking about. Okay. No? Yeah. So there you go. So Tolkien, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, you're saying Fritz Leber. I'd say Robert Jordan, mm-hmm. probably yeah. for like the Conan stuff, because that's where a lot of it came from. David Gemmel's there. Mm-hmm. Um, Raymond E. Feist, maybe. Probably Mer- <sighs> Catherine Kerr. Yeah, is interesting. Like Catherine Weiss. Kerr. Sorry, Margaret Weiss. That that's more your wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, Margaret Weiss. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've never been a massive Hobbs? fan. Robin Hobb? Yeah. But that, yeah. God, Robin Hobb is amazing. Mm. Yeah, Robin Hobbs. Yeah. yeah, I said wrong. Robin. Yeah. yeah. Who I only learnt, I, I would say about five, six years ago, is a woman. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, she she is a woman. Yeah. I, but I always thought it was a man. Yeah, same, so, I think. But it's because of the main character. This, this is a good topic, though. The yeah. canon of fantasy. Uh-huh. Which I, I think we'll get into a later date. Yeah. So, that's David Gemmell. Okay. Read David Gemmell. That's crosswords. Do a crossword. You get three and a half extra years of mental aptitude. Leif, what are we doing next week? Or next time? I don't know. Oh, good. But I want to finish on one thing. Mm-hmm. I read this weird thing today. Right. Okay. So, have you heard of Swedish uh, bedmaker Hestens? Have I heard... Let me just say that back to you. Have I heard of Swedish bedmaker Hestens? Yeah. Have you heard of them? Do you no. know that they exist? No. Okay. So, they make luxury brand beds right all right and apparently they made a bed that cost four million swedish kroners or about 400k dollars right and that's amazing to me I, f- I find it so crazy that i can buy a bed that's more expensive than my house i i i, I can't get it out of my head I, I know it's um, it's a weird one. But Sorry, the silence on my part <laughs> is just I'm waiting for you to link this to anything we've talked about. I don't care. I just found it interesting. And I, I've, I've read it today and I've been not been able to stop thinking about it. Right. Would you want one? Would you want to sleep in one? I No, because I'd be worried that I'd break it. Why? You why, bought it. Why is it that expensive? What's it made of? it's hand sewn it takes 600 hours to make and I don't know it's weird but I don't care about anything about that I'm I'm more wondering about the price like why would you if money is no object would you buy one? no I don't know like not why specifically not? I'd have to lie on it and see if I like it first not just yeah. buying something because it's the most expensive okay would you buy the most expensive car? again would you buy a limited edition first. of Legend that nobody else has? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that, that's different. That's something, you know, I've got a pre Would you read it? Would you touch it? No, God, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Really, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, no, so I, I find it weird that money is but that's like, so weird. And you, it, you can get a grilled cheese sandwich that costs 40,000 krona. I know, but that's just silly. This Would you is an actual it? thing. That actually people buy. You can even buy it. It's on a waiting list. You, you can buy anything that's like, you know, you can get a toaster that's, you know, a normal toaster is like 20 krona. You can get a toaster that's a million krona. Just depends what it's made of. You yeah, know? Would you though? Well, no. But no, I, but I, the I just bed, get, maybe. The bed, I'd have to sleep in it. I'd have to look at it. If it was aesthetically pleasing and it fit my house, yeah. Mm. I wouldn't rule it out. I would but I rather have in. this bed than the most expensive car in the world. I, I don't know. Like, most expensive car is probably more expensive. I don't know. So it depends on how much money I got. I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm, uh, I, so how do we get to sleep in this bed? What do you mean? I want to sleep in it. Can, you, can you hook me up? But is it, is it just the bed frame? It's not <laughs> no, the mattress. No, it's the mattress. Mattress as Mattress well. and bed. And is everything. the mattress built into the bed? Yeah. Can I you think. change the mattress? Uh, why? How much you? is the mattress? No, no, no. So it's like a three four five layered thing it's like a princess bed because a mattress generally you're meant to change like every three years is it yeah so you have to buy another one in three years but how much is a mattress it's probably 400 not okay like right. dollars but what does the bed add to the comfort that's is what is interesting so that's that's why i can't get it out of my head what i want to look s- like it's kind of nice actually is it's, it black and gold it's some designer who made it and is I, it black it, and gold it's blackish yeah and gold not gold it's blackish oh. yeah yeah so it's some designer I've never heard of because I'm not rich enough to heard of him. But yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, but the thing is, you spend so much time in your bed sleeping, right? Yeah. So it actually allures me to want to sleep in it. Right. Compared to a car that costs billions. I don't care. Uh, I drive this car. And it's fine. You know? Yeah. But this, I don't know why a bed speaks to me that way. So, because the bed's more expensive, would make you want to sleep in it more. No, so, okay. It's not. 
it's become a mystery, right? Okay, how does that prize, the, is it worth it? Will I sleep amazingly in how it? How much was it? Uh, 400k, $400,000. $400,000 for a bed. Mm -hmm. It's not like a real thing. Yeah, it is. No, but I mean, it's not like they mass produce these. No, because... Uh, it's like a, it's a... Oh, look, we've got newspaper print because of this. Well, there's a queue because it takes 600 hours to make What's one. What's it made of? I don't know. I don't know. Baby ducks who's extinct, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like something... Exclusively made of yeah. baby ducks who are now extinct because like they were all went into this Eagle bag. feathers that you're not allowed to use. I don't know. Yeah. Like something. It'll, it'll be made of ebony. Yeah, definitely. Like, absolutely, yeah. it's made of ebony. Like, <sighs> do you think you would have a better night's sleep in this? It depends how rich I am. Like, if if I could just barely afford this bed, you'd be so stressed like about the bills. Off. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'd be just like, uh, I don't want to use this bed because I might break this bed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the same time, if you buy something, you should use it, right? Yeah, but. If I've just been able to, like, if my dream all my life is, I want this bed. I'm going to save up for this bed. Yeah. Like, I earn decent, but, yeah. like, not 400,000 freaking dollar bed. You think it's decent. Yeah. But, so, I'd be too worried about it. If I had, like, um, I, I could buy a moon yeah. sort of money, okay. I, I'd get the bed. Yeah. Or I wouldn't get the bed. And yeah. I'd, I'd you have, have the sleep. bed in one of your yeah. 40 houses. I think the mattress is the most interesting yeah, but component. It's Definitely. So they make their whole thing. It's like a, I think it's all part of. You get the whole bed done, right? right? Yeah. But and there's aftercare there. Imagine sleeping in it and then uh, it's okay, and then going to your old bed and going, ah, this is much better. Yeah, that would suck. There's an interesting thing. Um, uh, what's his name? Patrick Rothfuss. Okay. I know you're a massive fan. Mm -hmm, definitely. But he has this uh, bit where uh, uh, quoth. Uh, gets gets a new room basically, okay. yeah. and he was like, "It's a very small room." Hmm. Oh no, it was when he got a bigger room. Okay, yeah. And he was like, "The room was too big." Yeah. And he was like, "I, I didn't feel comfortable." And he said, "Imagine that." Um, but then a room is like shoes. Hmm. You don't want a room that's too big. You don't want a room that's too small. You want a room that just fits. I agree. So I, I guess the bed's like that. You you just want a bed that's right for you. And if yes. the four hundred thousand dollar bed's right for you. And it, that's how will I know? Well, get into it. How? how? Look, I don't know. I Test can't, drive I, it. No. Yeah. <laughs> because imagine if it is the best bed, I will never ever be able to sleep oh, in you it. You wouldn't be able to go back to your yeah, yeah hundred thousand like, dollar like my bets. Three? No, not even that. Like five hundred dollars bed. Yeah. Sucked, and I will never ever be able to sleep in it and be content. Hmm. So it ruined beds forever for me. Four hundred thousand for a bed. Yeah, I don't even know what my bed cost. Like, I'm guessing not that much. No, <laughs> like with everything, like uh, five hundred dollars. What? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, a thousand at the most. No, not even for my bed. Like if you go luxury, mattress is more expensive. Yeah, but if bed. you go luxury system yeah, for yeah. normal people, it's like thousand or two thousand. Yeah. Dollars. And then the mattress costs double. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Because the mattress is what you actually sleep on. The yeah. other thing is like you can put the mattress on the floor. So I think the people who made this bed, like their entry brand or whatever, is probably like four thousand dollars. But again, it's, it's not a real thing. Like this is for column inches. Yeah, well at the same like, time they're selling out. So they're of course they are, but they've made like two. Yeah, maybe. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That that bed is for people. Mm -hmm. Like I I would say the richest people in earth, like the Bill Gates, don't buy this bed. No. That's for people. He's sensible. Who need he would that never buy this symbol. bed. Yeah, <laughs> that's for people who need that status symbol. Yeah, who want to go? Do you want to come to the bedroom? I'm like why? Uh, well, uh, I would definitely come to the bedroom. My bed costs four hundred thousand uh, dollars. Do I have to have sex with you to sleep with it? <laughs> would you? Yeah, probably. Maybe. Yeah, right. <laughs> How good is that bed? I just need exactly. to find out. Yeah, I'll give you my virginity. God damn it. Oh. No, no, it's, it's not for me. But yeah, I I don't know. Good. Would you deprive yourself the opportunity to sleep in this bed? If I had the opportunity, I I would try the bed. Mm. Absolutely would. But I, I'm not saving up for that bed. No, it's, it's a, 
take me a lifetime but i will never be rich so that's not (laughs) happening (laughs) yeah anyway Dave, what are we doing next time uh i was thinking weird rules about workplaces weird rules about workplaces yeah okay and and my favorite series that's better than gamma what what's that delusions in your head (laughs) what do you got uh no so okay i, I was thinking maybe the shows that uh, the, the books that got me into fantasy and got okay. me hooked so i'm thinking bad teenage fantasy such as uh forgotten realms dragon lands they're still good but they're they're written for an audience okay Are we, we're doing dragon lands then yeah maybe dragon lands have you read those i've done some dragon lands yeah I've done some Dragonlance. There you go. So next week or next time, uh, Dragonlance yeah. series and weird rules in workplaces. Yeah, why not? I don't know because they sound like terrible topics. But yeah, all right, yeah. Says the Gimmel and Crosswords <laughs> man. Hey man, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> not exactly appealing to a wide audience there. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> so thanks for listening, guys. Uh, if you want to send us a message, you can go to tangentaldiatribe at gmail.com. And that's tangential, T A N G E N? And you're T-A-L- supposed to do crosswords? I know, right? Diatribe. It's not tangential diatribe, it's tangential diatribe. Tangential? No, no, tangential. Tangential. Yeah, tangential, <laughs> which is a way you can spell tangential. Just in case, if you want to get in contact with us, you can go to tangentaldiatribe at gmail.com. Uh, make sure to check out our website, tangentaldiatribe.com. If you do have any fancy series you want to take up, bring it up that we can yeah. talk about. Yes. Send or just us an email or something. Topics in general. Do it. Absolutely. I've been Ronan V, and with me as always has been. Right. Have a nice one. Absolutely.